President Obama wants Israel to retract or move back their borders to pre-1967 days. How disconnected do you think he is with the reality of the Middle East and what would happen to Israel if they were to pull those borders back? Well, we've seen time and time again that President Obama is pretty naive when it comes to uh, foreign policy matters. For him to step forward and to call for these 1967 borders when no American president has done that before not only annoys and alienates Israel, it endangers Israel. It invites uh, trouble and potential uh, challenges because their enemies could sense separation between us uh, and them. And plus, on, a, on the ground, in a practical level, it is a terrible idea. It reopens the issue of the Golan Heights. It reopens the possibility of a divided Jerusalem. He said a Palestinian state should be contiguous. And you think of the location of the West Bank and Gaza. Then to say a future Palestinian state would be contiguous in that regard seems impractical, or at least raises all kinds of questions. And so I think it's a very naive and a very dangerous position for the president to take. And he's undermined our friendship with Israel and their security posture. And I don't like it one bit. And also, it'll, it'll cause a problem with the, the crisis we have now with the oil. Obviously, the gas prices will go through the roof if, if this continue, its instability continues if, with the uh, rhetoric or statements that he's made. Like. Yeah, and, and of course, those markets and people to invest in it need stability. And when you have these ongoing undermining of, of our security interests, our relationship with Israel, combined with all the other events in the Middle East, it continues to put doubt in the energy markets, particularly in the Middle East. And that, of course, has an upward pressure on oil. We need stability, we need certainty, uh, and what he's offering is, I think, a naive, uh, in many cases tardy, but equivocal approach to our security uh, interests and our relationships with key allies around the world, and bullies and folks who would challenge the United States of America and our friends, I think, want to see first and foremost confidence, stability, and strength, and that's not what he's offering. Now, you still stand by your statement that you're against any form of cap and trade. Absolutely. Um, one thing, uh, while governor of, uh, of Minnesota, you propose or you're a proponent of the Muslim mortgage program, and you backed away from that. Why is that? Well, I wasn't Why a was proponent that? of it. Actually, I was the person who put it out of business. And so our housing finance agency in Minnesota had developed something called the New Market Mortgage Program. It didn't use the word Muslim or Sharia or anything in it like that. But when it came to my attention, I was the one who directed that it be stopped and be put out of business. Uh, there was some criticism that we should have done it sooner or whatever, but the fact of the matter is, when I learned of it, uh, I was the one who directed it that it be stopped. And in the meantime, only a few people at, at most even used it. So it's much to do about nothing, but there's some folks, uh, I think, who are not my political friends, who are trying to spin it a different way, but those are the facts. Now, first of all, why would, uh, why you uh, as president, why should we vote for you? Uh, and secondly, uh, I'm sure it's, it's far down the road now, but I mean, BP, so who, what kind of candidate, uh, what kind of uh, vice president pick would you like, or would you be looking for sure. to, to, to complement your candidacy? Well, in terms of why people should support me, I'm going to look the American people in the eye and tell them the truth about the real challenges facing this country and what it's going to really take to fix them. And I'm not just going to be flapping my jaw like some other politician. I've got a record to back it up, and I've got the fortitude to actually get it done. And if you look at my life story, growing up in a meatpacking town, having my mom die when I was young, being the only one in my family to go to college. Uh, I've lived the American dream, and I know that Floridians understand uh, the American dream. And so I've got that background, that my feet are planted, my compass is set, and my values are right. But I also understand that this is about getting things done. And when you look at Minnesota and what I was able to accomplish there, the only one in the country, uh, one of four governors to get an A grade from the Cato Institute, the other three aren't running for president. And so we got stuff done. We got taxes reduced. Uh, we had spending reduced, we did market-based health care reform, not government-based health care reform, public employee pension reform before it was popular, and much more. So if people like those kinds of accomplishments and the fortitude to get it done, then I think they'll like my candidacy. So uh, lastly, again, the, uh, any particular type of VP you're looking oh, for? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm VP. Well, we got a, we got a tremendous uh, talent pool across the country. but. First and foremost, you want somebody who can actually be President of the United States. And the number one criteria is, is that person ready? Do they have the requisite experience, background, skills, judgment, maturity, strength to be President of the United States and Commander-in-Chief? And then number two, look at, our, look at who's coming up in the next generation of uh, leaders in this country. You've got one right here in Florida, Marco Rubio. Is he, would he be a consideration for He's going to be on everybody's list. How about Alan West? Alan West, I don't know as well, uh, but he's obviously a rising star. But look, look across the country. You have Brian Sandoval, the governor of, of New Mexico, who's 
fabulous. We've got Bobby Jindal in Louisiana, Susan Mart Martinez in New Mexico, we've got Nikki Haley in South Carolina, John Kasich in Ohio, Governor Walker in Wisconsin, Senator Portman uh, in Ohio. These are just a few, just examples of the kind of talent that we've got in the Republican Party. It's immense, but I'll tell you, uh, our friend Marco, uh, he's going to be on everybody's list and he's already a star. So he's on your list. Well, there's no list yet. Well, but, uh, you know, you can't look at the field of talent and not acknowledge that he's somebody that is going to be a big part of the future of the Republican Party and the conservative movement. Governor Plenty, thank you very much. All right, you're welcome, Javier. Thanks for having me.